So we have to draw the ball cap. And we only really have to draw half of the ball cap. So we just need to draw the outline of the top half of it. Oh. We'll draw the outline of the top half of the ball cap. And it's something like this. All right, so we will start with the three and a quarter and the two and the eight, the overall dimensions. So I'll go ahead and I'll start with a construction line in the middle and a top line that's three and a quarter away. So here's my construction line in the middle. And I'll draw another line that is, let's see, up here, I think it was, oh, let's just line it up with the end there. And it was supposed to be three and a quarter away. All right, I can connect the end here. I know it's supposed to be square. And let's put a dimension on that. How tall is, oh, where did you that? What am I doing? I need to put the length of this thing on here, the total length, so, so let's check back. Two and an eighth. So the total length of this thing is two and an eighth long. I'm actually not gonna dimension this line. I'm gonna just put float one out here and I will put a dimension on it from this line to this line two and one eighth so I'll move just a little bit then there was an angle it kind of came up at an angle like this and I'll trim this extra piece off here there it is and I don't, don't really know what that angle is but I know what this line dimension right here is it is five eighths so i'll go ahead and dimension this to five eighths there it is and the width of this line right here is two and five eighths diameter so i'm going to come back and i can dimension the point to the construction line and then down and make that that two and five eighths diameter two and five eighths there it is look at that now i need to make a, it's going to be the drill so drills kind of come in and they go down at about 30 degrees from uh, vertical so I'll come over here and I'll just click as a as a guess something like that and we'll close it up now all I have to do is just do some finalizing dimensions on this thing so the drill is 1 and 13 sixteenths to the inside line here so I'm going to come to this point come down here and I will do 1 and 13 sixteenths doing the whole uh, solid line dimension line dragging down to a phantom um, diameter is a really handy technique all right so we'll come here and we'll come here and we want 90 plus 30 so 120 and so we'll shift it to 120 degrees, 120 degrees. And we need probably another dimension in here for the depth. One and one sixteenth deep. So I'll come over here. And we'll add a dimension right there. One and one sixteenth. There it is. Okay. I can do the fillets on the corners here after it's 3d so i'll just go ahead and accept this and i will do my revolve i'll revolve the object around the center axis or center of tiny line right there 
and I'll accept that. And then I can put a fillet on the outside edge of 1 16th, I think it was. And then a fillet. We'll accept that fillet. There it is. And then I think a fillet goes on this top edge here of 1 8th. There we go. And so we got that. That's 1 8th. Yep. That's 1 16th. We're good. I think that's all we need. Let's take a look at the inside. It looks like it got a drill. There's a drill point there. Okay. Now we have to do the points. And so the points are on the uh, left face here on this thing. If we turn it towards the left. And they are going to be offset from the center. So what I might do is I might offset this front plane. I'll make a new plane and I'll offset it just a little bit. So we'll come here, we'll make a new plane and I'll offset it by 3 sixteenths. And the reason I'm offsetting it by 3 sixteenths is because from the center of the object to the center line of the little spikes it's 3 sixteenths distance. And I want to put all the spikes on this line in the correct position. Just make it a little bit easier for me. All right. I'll come back over here. And now I will turn off my front plane. So plane 2 is only showing. It's a little bit easier to see. And that's that 13 or the 3 sixteenths offset. I can always come back and change it if I if I mess that one up, and I'll do a sketch on plane two. So a new sketch. We'll view normal, and I am going to come down here, and I have to draw half of one of these triangles. So let me zoom in on one of these guys. Let's bring this over to the left here and up a little bit. All right, so they are. 1 8th inch tall. They are at 90, the points are at 90 degrees. So that's pretty much all I need. So half of it would still be 1 8th inch, 1 8th inch tall, but it would be at 45 degrees, and the line here would be horizontal. So let's come here and let's just draw a horizontal line. And I can see the horizontal um, constraint, that little dash down to the bottom right of my cursor. I'll zoom in a little bit. I'll go a little bit below the surface. I'll come up with a vertical line. And then I'll come over and I'll close that. I'll dimension this angle to 45 degrees. There it is. And I'll dimension the height by going to the origin, not necessarily the line, but I'm going to go to the origin, the dot, and this dot right here, and I'll bring my measurement down, and I'll say it's only got to be one eighth inch above the surface. And now I want how far up. So we've got it one eighth inch above the surface here, and how far up from my center point. Well, it's half of this 3 8 so it's another 3 16 up to get to that location. So I go up 3 16 So I'm trying to get this in the, in the right spot. So I'll go ahead and accept that. So I got this little triangle, and I'm going to revolve it. I'm going to revolve this little, tr this little triangle on the bottom line this is of the axis. And I'm not going to add it to my drawing. I'm going to make it new because I'm going to have to make copies of this thing. So I'm going to have this new part that I can change and I can rotate around and see that it's in the right spot. It's 3 16 over from that center point because it's on this plane that I offset. Now I can go ahead and I can turn off the plane that we made before and turn on the front plane again so things are kind of back to normal and now I'm going to do a linear pattern and make this thing multiply 
So let's view normal two. It should be 3 sixteenths up, 3 sixteenths over because of the offsetting of my plane and my where my sketch was located. Now I can do a linear pattern. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to linear pattern this in the direction. Now when you select direction, it's almost like a mirror line. I'm going to click this horizontal plane and you can see that it appears up there. I can flip it to the other side. It's almost like a line for a mirror, like if I wanted it to appear down here. Now the distance away should be 3 eighths. There it is. I'm going to accept that. Now I am going to click this one and hold down shift and select the second one and I'm going to do my linear pattern again. This time I'm going to linear pattern them. I'm going to reverse it the opposite direction, linear pattern them below. And you would think if I just did 3 eighths away, it's, that's not it. It's double 3 eighths. So it's 3 quarters away. Because we're going from this original one up here, 3 eighths, and then 3 quarters for the new one. So this is the pattern for the base pattern for our block. I'm going to go ahead and accept this. Let's just double check. There is four here separated by three eighths. It looks good. We've got another set of four three eighths away next to it. So I'm going to try to get this pattern here. So let's go over here. I'm going to turn off part five, my cap. It'll make it easier to select. So I just draw a window crossing those, make sure they're all highlighted. Then I'll do my linear pattern. And I know I, I would want to kind of mirror them over. I'm going to mirror them over here. And I'm going to have them be 3 eighths away. And we've got to make sure we choose the correct side that they're on. I want them actually over on this side. I'm going to... There's a couple of things I could do. I could make the whole entire center pattern or I could make the pattern up above. I might as well just make the pattern up above. I'll go through here and I'll select these these two, draw a window, and I'll make a linear pattern. The direction is up above, and I'll reverse it here, and zoom out. Where the heck did they go? Did they not show up? Uh, oh, I didn't choose my direction. There we go. All right, so, whoops, that's bad. Well, I'll get reoriented here on the right side view, actually left view. And now we want the distance of three quarters for those, I think. Yep, it's three quarters up to this little set of two over here. And then three quarters down for this other set of two. So I'll do that twice. So we've got this. Draw a box around these. Linear pattern. Direction. This horizontal line. And flip. See where they show up. There they are. And three quarters. And now, do it again. This time I'll do a linear pattern, but I want this to be on the other side, so I'll go to the vertical, and it kind of shows up that way, and I'll go three-fourths. Now all I have to do is select everything, do a linear pattern, click this vertical line almost like a mirror. Flip to the other side. There it is. And let's try 3 eighths and see what happens. Ooh, let's try 3 fourths, see what happens. Ooh, did I forget this group over here? Let's cancel this out. Hold on now. You know what might be easier is just to mirror it. Let's do a mirror. Mirror this. Mirror plane is going to be 
this one there it is cool there they all are now the reason I had them in the part I'm gonna show it you know, show it um, again by clicking the eyeball the reason I had them in the part is because I'm going to fuse them all together look at all these little dots I've got all these little parts on the left hand side a ton of parts I'm going to just take this whole thing draw a box around it highlight the whole thing select all of them and boolean union them together fuse them together so they all fuse into one part again there it is so now here are all the steps I did, all the linear patterns. And I can make a new folder called the ball cap. And let's see, the ball cap is probably in here somewhere, probably at the bottom. So I'll take all these steps, hold down shift and click, take all those steps and drag and drop them into the ball cap make sure it's surrounded by a blue box drop it in there it is there's the ball cap part five let's rename this dude ball cap now i have got all my parts ready to rock and roll